So uh, numbers are out, and this shouldn't surprise really much of anybody, but the trust in media right now is at record lows. Um, the issue is this has enormous consequences. Um, the writing has been on the wall with this for a long, long time. Uh, I remember a, a Saturday Night Live skit going back to the uh, late 1990s. Um, it was it was a takeoff on Schoolhouse Rock. They had conspiracy, uh, conspiracy rock or something like that. And they did this skit called Mediaopoly, where it basically showing how you know, all of the major media companies are owned by major corporations and how they can go about tinkering with stories. And I, I've covered this over the years in other ways where, you know, big time advertisers can influence uh, decisions that take place in the newsroom. Um, again, going back to the, the big investment firms and the amount of money that they spend in advertising. And I couldn't figure out why they were spending that money. They weren't really selling anything in the ads. And Basically, they were buying just great editorial content. Neither here nor there. But you take a look at these numbers. 29% of U.S. adults have not very much trust in the media. A record high, 39% have none at all. None at all. That is the highest on record. Um, wow. Uh, again, you, you look at this and... Again, there's, there's a political gap as well. Uh, 58% of Democrats trust the media. Uh, only 11% feel the same. Um, consequences with this, people. Um, last week on the program, I uh, did a lengthy podcast talking about this country and the state that we're in and, and how divided we are. And the fact that, you know, other polls out there showing that it's okay to result, uh, resort to violence against people that you disagree with. And, and interestingly enough, um, Jonathan Turley, uh, lawyer, uh, constitutional lawyer, uh, he appears on media outlets a lot. He penned a piece today and in many respects echoing some of the things that I discussed, uh, last week in talking about the crisis of faith in this country and our constitution. And it's, he's saying that it is one of the greatest crises that our nation has faced since its foundation. Um, recent poll, he mentions, I talked about this last week, a majority of voters not only view the opposing party as a threat to the nation, but justifying violence to combat their agenda. And, and again, do, do we not see this play out all the time uh, on news media, uh, yelling and screaming at one another, various different people that are going on, no, no sort of um, Socratic debate in, in the conversations that are had, uh, constantly demonizing people that you, you disagree with, like they, they are the enemy. Um, it's it's a problem, okay? Uh, 52% of Biden supporters say Republicans are now a threat to American life, while 47% of Trump supporters say the same about Democrats. What does that mean? Anyway, the threat to uh, American life. Well, again, I, I would I wish they would, you know, if they said that they are. What it, I want you to define that. What is what is to you? What does American life mean? Um, to me, it, I mean, you take a look at our constitution and how it is supposed to protect, um, against majority rule. We don't have a democracy here. You're supposed to rep uh, protect people's rights. Me, American life is, you know, the ability to go out there and succeed beyond your wildest dreams and fail and, and also live in a place where, guess what? You're not going to agree with everybody. There are going to be opposing viewpoints. And again, if, if you're not able to, if you're not able to, to uh, I guess, understand the other side of an argument, or at least look into, you know, try to understand what other people are getting at, that's a bit of a problem in of itself also. Um, again, I, I mentioned this, 41% of Biden supporters now believe violence is justified to stop Republicans from achieving their goals. 
uh, almost an identical percentage, 38 percent of Trump supporters, not you know, they're not necessarily all Republicans, but Trump supporters now embrace violence to stop uh, Democrats. Um, Turley says in this, and again, going back, uh, nobody trusts the media right now. Faith is the one thing that no system of government can do without. Without faith in the underlying values of a constitutional system, authority rests on a mix of coercion and capitulation. Um, and he's talked about the growing loss of faith and how it's fueled by these so-called uh, intellectuals, elites that they parade. In particular, uh, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm biased on this. and tell my bias, but MSNBC is a disaster. I mean, I got my complaints with the networks on both sides, but the the type of whack jobs that they parade on there, and I, I you can laugh at them. But there's people here in this country that actually take them seriously. You got comment regular commentators and contributors on MSNBC that are calling um, that call the Constitution trash. What's that guy? Uh, Ely Mistel there, the guy with the, the crazy hair there, called the U.S. Constitution trash and argued that we should simply dump it. Uh, New York Times column, the Constitution is broken and should not be reclaimed. You got a law professor from Harvard and uh, Yale that the Constitution needs to be radically altered to reclaim America from constitutionalism. They can go on and on and on. Um, but again, it's it's again how you get your, your, your notice, quite frankly. The more radical you are, um, the better chance of you getting a, uh, uh, you know, a professorship somewhere and, and getting yourself on MSNBC. Um, Media is playing a big part of this. It really is. It, it plays it. The, the trust in the media, people not believing what they're told. And again, they've, they've done it to themselves. They have. I mean, I, I called for this years ago. I, I wish that uh, the, the major media companies would divest of uh, their, their news networks and make it standalone operations. There and again, but you know, you're starting to see some work done um, on the outside where where people are trying to to do a, a much better job. To me, it seems like a, an enormous uh, opportunity, quite frankly, to actually you know try and deliver things as straight as you can. Quite frankly, it's what we try here. I mean, I, I let everybody know that you know I have certain belief system. You can listen to it here. However, you know, I we end up bashing both sides. And we try to get to some sort of truth. And shouldn't that be the, the ultimate the ultimate game that you're trying to get to some sort of truth of the matter? Not that, that it's, it's always possible and people are going to disagree on a, on a myriad of things and how things can be done. But shouldn't we be striving that? Shouldn't we try to find some sort of commonality? What are you looking to achieve? Whatever issue it may be, whether it be immigration, whether it be poverty in America, okay, you believe that this is what we need to do. We believe this is what we need to do. Let's discuss this and figure out if we can find some sort of common ground in order to achieve these goals that we we both have. But no, no, it's um, it's grab your torches and your your pitchforks and, and destroy the people that you you disagree with. Watchdog on Wall Street dot com.